Hi guys, so today I'm gonna do a biannual favorites. Now, I wanted to do a monthly favorites, but the thing is, I always have to do it at the end of the month, and then sometimes I miss it, and some months I just don't have a lot of favorites to share, but I have combined everything, I have kept track on my bullet journal, by the way, that's also one of my favorites, like having a bullet journal from, I think, April of this year. Ooh, it's changed my life, but uh, okay, I might do a separate video. I'm not even in the favorites yet. Oh my god, stop! So with Without further ado, I'm gonna jump right in. I know I should have made this at the end of June, but I was just like too busy. So I gotta do it at the end of July. Still good enough lah, right? So I'm gonna be sharing with you skincare, makeup, um, accessories, tech stuff, stuff on YouTube that I watch a lot, and just like whatever else I'm into. So are you ready? Grab a cup of tea, grab a snack, cause we're gonna be here for a while. <laughs> First thing I wanna get into are uh, like oil cleansers, you know, stuff to remove makeup with. I remember there was one that I was using that I did not like at all. I think I mentioned it in one of my other like monthly review favorites kind of videos. I don't even remember what it's called. I just remember that it didn't really work. Oh, the rice cleanser from the face shop. Oh, I used a lot of it and then it just doesn't really work very well so I wasn't a fan of it and so I was on the lookout for better oil cleansers. So these are the two that I've been loving so far. This is from Look Fantastic. This is the Grapefruit Vita Bubble Oil Foam. It's by G9 Skin which I think is a Korean brand. As you can tell right, it looks like I haven't been using a lot of it but I've been using it pretty much every single day with this. Um, I got this one pretty early in the month. So this is the Huxley Secret of Sahara Cleansing Gel. I'm gonna, you know, talk about this later, but this is bloody good. I was not expecting it because I'd never heard of G9 Skin before. I didn't even know what it was. I tried this and I was like, oh dang, like this is good. It is a bubble oil foam, as weird as that sounds. So it's a bubble foaming oil cleanser that doesn't strip your skin and removes your makeup really well. I use this with a very, very gentle cleanser and when I go in for toner, I do not see any bit of makeup or like dirt or oil at all. The reason why it's so high up here, it looks like I haven't been using it right, is because it takes literally less than a pump. I would say half a pump, like I press it down halfway and then I'm just, it's more than enough for your entire face. It, which, which is which is insane because this is a big ass bottle. This is the reason why that this is like the first product. So yeah, if you've never tried it before, you should. It does also smell a little bit like fruity, a bit like grapefruity. This is my like newfound favorite. I also love this. So on days where I want a more luxurious, more like sensual, because the scent from Huxley products are just amazing. And I, I'm gonna segue a little bit into the other stuff from Huxley that I really like. Can you see? It's almost out. Can you see? Can you see? I love this so much. I'm so sad that this is like almost out. This is also from the Secret of Sahara range. It's the oil essence. So it's like an essence but it's like an oil. <laughs> it leaves your skin glowing like nothing else. I only just realized that like everyone was commenting on my The Ordinary review saying that my skin was like literally so glowy and so beautiful, right? It's this in combination with the buffet. And then I just didn't powder my face so it was just like super glowy but dang son, like, this is good. I really, really, really love it and the smell. I distinctly remember featuring this for my everyday makeup tutorial and like yeah, I use it in the day as well. It doesn't clog up my skin and makes me look glowy and it smells fantastic. So it just like wakes you up and it has the same scent like in these two products. <laughs> this is just what you would expect from a cleansing gel. You know, it's very smooth, it acts like a gel, it just melts off all of your makeup. The packaging is so minimal and so cute. I'm just very, very, very drawn to its smell. The smell is like something else. I don't know how to describe it. It's like herbly, spa-like. Mmm. I, I don't know what it is. Actually, I don't know the prices of these two, but I'm gonna list them on the screen and I'm also gonna link them down below. Everything that I mentioned today will be listed down below in the description bar. It also does a really good job of melting your makeup off. I think way better than the Biore ones for both of them, so I don't think I'm ever gonna go back, even though the Biore one is really good. This one just melts your makeup right off. And it smells great! And you're just like, ding, I'm clean and I smell good. So yeah, I really like it. This one is also my new favorite find. This is also from Huxley. This is also the Secret of Sahara range. And this is the Sun Cream Stay Sun Safe SPF 
50 plus PA plus 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 plus. The only thing that I don't like about this is that it's very small. So I feel like it's gonna run out really soon. But it has the same smell and it also goes onto your skin super well. It absorbs really really fast. I have a lot of sunscreen and I use sunscreen every single day. This has been kind of amazing. Because I'm moving out like right after I get back from Melbourne and Penang, right? So I have already started packing up all of my stuff. This is the only sunscreen that I kept out even though I have about like nine sunscreens. Yeah, no kidding. I got these from Makiza by the way which is a local company I think, support local. And they also carry like a ton of other Korean brands. They also sent me a bunch of like Giverny products so I'm gonna try them out soon but I've already packed them in so I'm gonna have to like dig them out and try them like in August or sometime like that but I just really really enjoy the Huxley stuff and they have a bunch of these on their side so I'm gonna link it to it. So my final favorite I think I've mentioned this before but this is the Cordelli instant detox mask. Look at how much of it I think it's almost out and it's like super janky it's honestly one of the lightest clay masks I've ever used it does a really good job at kind of like detoxing your skin freaks out a little bit one day after and then everything else just kind of like mellows out and it clears all of your toxins clears all of your oils and like all those bad stuff in your skin literally it's instant detox I've been using this for almost a year now and it's almost out so I like to switch them up with like different clay masks right and I always go back to this because it's so convenient. It's just one of my staples and I actually got this from Look Fantastic. Funny enough, right, they actually sent me a Cordelli box. They asked me if I wanted it lah, then I was like, yes! So, I don't have the box on hand, like it, it came in a beauty box. You know how like Look Fantastic always comes in like these beautiful boxes? Because the boxes are really sturdy. So I repurpose all of my Look Fantastic boxes. So I have them in a little packet here. I want to show you what I got. This is the Cordelli Glow Activating Anti-Wrinkle Serum. I I never know what to do with myself when I get like anti-aging stuff but I still am pretty excited. I also got a bunch of other stuff. <laughs> Namely a new bottle of the Instant Detox Mask. I'm so excited. I'm so excited. I also got this which is kind of in a similar packaging which made me go ooh what is this? So this is the Deep Cleansing Exfoliator. This is the Grape Water. What? Wait let me try it. And last but not least, this little baby, it is a 3-in-1 moisturizer. Perfect for traveling actually, so I'm gonna take this with me. So I'm gonna be trying these out and I'm gonna be letting you know, hopefully not by December, hopefully I still do more like monthly favorites I guess. Do you like the monthly favorites? If you do, let me know in the comments. Cause like, some people just don't like them, but I like them because like, I'm talking about my favorite items, so they make me happy. Honorable mention, I don't have it on hand right now, which is why I'm not gonna get too much into it, and I do have a separate review on it, but my Herbal Essence Argan Oil Shampoo and Conditioner Duo, they are so good, and they are so affordable. You can get them in any like leading supermarkets. I'm not even gonna get into it because I already have a dedicated product review, either coming in or it's already uploaded. So if you don't see it, just hang on for like another week or so. I'm sure you'll see it. But it's just an amazing shampoo and conditioner. It's the only thing I use now. All right, moving on to makeup, right? I do have something that's pretty exciting. Now, I actually, okay, this is a new one. Ta-da! Ta-da! So this is a brush roll with 15 brushes and this is from Vanity Planet. Now the reason why I'm showing you the new one is because I have already been using the one that I got the first time round. I got it almost a year ago. Um, the same time that I talked about my favourites being the facial brush for Vanity Planet. So I also got sent this one and I've just been using it pretty much all the time. Like I mix it up with, I'm looking there because all my brushes are there and like I just have them mixed up with all of my real techniques, um, some of my bobby brown, like some stuff I tried to find on Taobao. The handles are light and they're made out of birch wood as you can see. Really really pretty and they are also synthetic brushes which means they're 100% cruelty free and they just have like a ton of different, you know what, I'm just gonna refer to the thing and tell you guys what is in this. It comes with a kabuki brush, as you can see, a powder blush brush, a flat top stippling brush, good for like foundation, all that, angled contour brush, a liquid foundation brush, a large fan brush, a concealer brush, a medium blender smudging brush, crease shader, a large dome shader, a precision concealer, a rounded liner brush, angled lining brush, and a lip liner brush with cap. It's really great for someone who is just starting out with makeup, who wants like a complete set that they can work with and not have to buy 
any additional brushes. I particularly like how small the bristles are because for some brushes, right, I think if they're meant for like a Western audience, they tend to get really like big. And so when I buff them out, it kind of like smudges everywhere because the brushes themselves are so big. So I like how small these are. And I also just really enjoy how soft and cute they are. Like these are super super soft. So I really like them and I'm gonna put them back in as packaging because I want to be able to move them like this when they're completely new. And it comes with this protective brush roll so you can bring them around anywhere you want. So I'm gonna keep this because I think this is really great for like travel friendly days or if I want to go out for shoots and stuff. Because the one that I have right now is like integrated into all my other stuff. Like literally, it's... It's right here. So this palette actually retails for $69.99 USD, which girl is steep. I know, 15 brushes, but it's still it's still pretty steep. So I wouldn't recommend you getting it at the full price. I do have a code for 70% off. Yeah, no shit. 70% off its Brenda palette. I will list it down below in the description bar as well. So go get you some. Alright, the next favorite are these. Now, these are so lame. Okay, so with eyebrows, right, I'm constantly playing with like different eyebrow pencils. I'm still not in the habit of using powders. Yeah, just because I think I like the look of like individual strokes. But these two have been my staples for the most of this year. I think I actually did a video hauling these and I was like, oh, I don't know what the difference is between the ColourPop Brow Boss and the Brow Pencil. So I have got my answer for you guys. The Brow Pencil is definitely a lot more creamy. You see the individual strokes a lot more, but the thing is, it also smudges a lot more. So while the colour is definitely more intense and creamy, this is a lot more waxy. And for beginners, this would be perfect because it's very forgiving. So if you make a mistake, just like... It stays on the skin a lot better. So right at the ends here, right? I don't really have much hairs, so I want to extend it. And if you want to do like for photo shoots or if you just want like a one hour kind of staying power thing, this is awesome. But as time goes by, especially with oilier skin or especially with like humid weather, right, I realize that when I do this, sometimes I end up like taking it off. So sometimes I lose my tail, which is like, girl. <laughs> Embarrassing. So what I do now is I actually go in with this and then a couple of hairs on top and I feel like it's it, it like it stays really well. And the reason why this is a favorite, even though like the Anastasia one I use a lot, um the NYX Microbrow NYX Microbrow is also really really great. Um but I don't use it as much now. The benefit one is really good too. But the reason why I chose these as my favorites is because these are like five, six USD, which is really 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 affordable. If you are looking for a cheap eyebrow pencil alternative, you can try these. This is the brow pencil in black and brown. Now I definitely prefer the jet black one but I ran out and I had this one and my hair's a bit lighter so I was like eh, might as well. And this is in black I think, the brow boss. So these are also my favorites. Okay now moving on, I'm not gonna delve too far into fashion just because I, I told you I kept everything already but I do want to tell you guys that I have been loving the clothes from my two previous hauls. It might be one upcoming haul, one previous haul but it's it's basically two Shein hauls. I'm not sponsored, okay? Some of the stuff they sent to me, which I completely appreciate and I love, thank you, but like, I'm not sponsored when I say that I really love Shein stuff because they are bringing in new styles that are not like that florally, big, messy pattern. It's funny because I'm literally wearing a floral dress right now, but but I just really love like clean, kind of like vintage inspired, neat silhouettes that are very classic and a little bit more put together. And I've just been really, really into like straws, wickers, comfortable, beautiful clothes. I know that Shein is a fast fashion store and it's very, very affordable, which makes me like really wonder about the quality, about the practices. But I do have to say that I always recycle my clothes. Um, I always either repurpose them or I keep them for a while or I sell them I pass them on to the next person. Also because I'm a student and I'm broke and I can't afford to be buying like $300 t-shirts. I do support slow fashion and I will continue getting them but I also will continue like buying from fast fashion places also because I don't treat them like fast fashion pieces. I just had to put that out there because like I feel a lot of guilt 
on my own part because I follow a lot of designers on Instagram and I love their stuff and they are always talking about how like fast fashion is very detrimental to the industry so a lot of consumer guilt lah but I just really love it and I think for people like us who realistically are always gonna buy fast fashion stuff always gonna buy stuff from like H&M, Zara, Mango, blah 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 I guess it's okay to shop on Shein every once in a while and like the quality of their stuff is really pretty good for their price so yeah let's talk about miscellaneous stuff, alright? First of all, Tech Stuff, which is the Studio Nevis. It's a Swedish brand, but dang son, I love it. These are wireless Bluetooth headphones, and look at them. I got the white ones with rose gold hardware. I cannot begin to explain how much this has changed my life. I listen to music all the time when I'm out. When I'm on public transport, like I literally suffer if I cannot listen to music, if I cannot block out the noise of the trains or people. I'm just that kind of person. And I just love listening to my favorite tunes, love discovering new music. And this has been with me ever since the day I got it. So amazing. Now you think like, oh, wireless earphones, you're gonna lose them really quickly. But for some reason, right, when I put them in my ears, and for me, okay, I've got weird ears. So my ear holes are like smaller than the average humans. So I always either find it very difficult to put earbuds in, like ear pods don't work for me because they're just way too big and they don't fit. I always worry that like if I ran or if like I, you know, I always worry if I cross like the lift or the MRT, it falls into the cracks. I always worry about that. But the thing is, even when I'm walking, I can feel it falling out. So like I can feel it slowly like dislodging. So I can catch it before it happens or like I can move it back. So I never have that problem and it's just been so great. The bass on this is awesome. Um, it's a very rounded sound. I know it sounds so lame to be so excited over earphones but you know how when you're in the toilet and when you have earphones on, you gotta like detangle or like bring your phone? No dude, I just and I'm done. And because I have one of those blasted iPhone 7s, I can charge my phone while listening to music, which I couldn't do before, which I really, really freaking hated. So now I'm just kind of like, dang, I can do all the things I wanted to do. The only thing, the only two things I don't like about this is that first of all, when you answer calls, maybe it's me, like I don't know how to use it, the person can't hear me on the phone and I would have to like disconnect them, plop them back and then answer them with like and sometimes when I'm carrying a lot of stuff it's very annoying and the second thing is the left earbud sometimes it's a bit glitchy I would say on average right 10 times I use it one time it will glitch but you can just like restart it or whatever there's also a plug here for you to charge your earphones while it's in the case everyone is always commenting on these when they see them because they're like oh my god what is that what's in your ear and it's just earphones i don't get tangled up with my bag i don't get it like it's it's been very life-changing these retail for about 150 dollars but i will be very honest even though they sent it to me they sent it to like every influencer lah, okay not just me but if i were to lose it I would still go out and buy it. Like I would scour the internet for like a discount code and then I would buy it. It has just, I don't think I can go back anymore. Yeah, I, I'm really, really, really happy with these. These are like a staple. I'm literally gonna put them right in my bag so that I don't forget to take them out. If you wanna get it for yourself or as a gift, I highly recommend it. I have a 15% discount code. It's Brenda Tan. I'ma hit you up down below. 15% is like $15, which is pretty good, right? Wait, no, it's uh $20, $20? $20? 10% of 150 is 15 $20? Okay, now we're moving on to films, TV, and YouTube, okay? Which, which we can start off first? I love everything. Okay, let's go with films first. So, Isle of Dogs, definitely one of my favourites this year by Wes Anderson. It's completely done in stop motion. It's amazing. It's brilliant. It also does a very good job of like characterizing dogs and a human's relationship with dogs and all of that and it just delves into something a lot deeper than. I'm gonna need a refresher but I think that might be my top like Wes Anderson film ever and I love Wes Anderson so ah oh, just so so brilliant. I love everything about it. The set was amazing, how they did it was amazing, the characterization of music. I watched it when it just came out at the projector so like I have a lot of fond memories 
memories of watching it on the big screen and just like really taking it in. So really, really love Isle of Dogs. Now moving on to TV shows, I got a bunch for you guys. First and foremost is Atlanta. It's by Donald Glover, aka Childish Gambino. Atlanta, Georgia is where he grew up and it is like the birthplace of hip hop. There's a very strong and like pertinent black community there and it's just amazing. The portrayal of like family dynamics, relationships, um, rap, you know, the come up, like it's just amazing and it's just beautifully shot. Donald Glover is one of my heroes right now, like I love him so much. So I really, really, really loved it. Also, I'm gonna sidetrack for a bit. Pigeon by Isao Yukisara, I think. I just watched it yesterday um, at a film festival. It's an intercultural piece. So um, Sharifa Amani is a Malaysian actress. She's really known for her Yasmin Ahmad films, which is another one of my favourite people that I've like just come to know. Um, unfortunately, she has passed away for I think five or six years now. But I remember watching this other play called Actor 40. Yen Yen, I think is the actor's name, Yo Yen Yen. She was talking about Yasmin Ahmad and like the kind of influence that she had. And then when I did research about her, I just loved her as people. So yeah, Pigeon is also really good, but I brought them up because I really like the kind of people that Donald Glover and like Yasmin Ahmad are. Inspiring, very like funny, charismatic, art-making people and making very like sincere um, films, sincere like like TV shows, ads, etc. Uh, music included for, for Donald Glover, of course. So yeah, I've just been a really big fan. Now I've yet to finish season 2 yet because I was kind of waiting on a friend. But I'm fuck it lah, I'm gonna just watch it on my own. Holding my bullet journal right now, I can show you guys. So I was kind of like keeping, it's really messy. Please don't judge me, okay? But I was just kind of like scribbling what I liked about Atlanta and I spelled it wrongly and I was like, fucking kidding me? So I really love Atlanta. I love how he uses humour to like undercut the really intense moments. I love how seamless the portrayal of characters are. I love how it brings to light a lot of what the black community has to face, the different kinds of people in the community. And it was just very, very present, I think, very like contemporary, which is different from like Do the Right Thing by Spike Lee which is a little bit more of like the 80s kind of portrayal of like the African American slash black community. Really amazing, wonderful stuff and also just very well written, um, very interesting, very funny and like Darius is just the cutest human being in the world, one of the characters. So yeah, go watch the trailer, go watch it. Um, I found it on Put Locker so so that's that, and I also have been watching Sex and the City. I think I much prefer like seasons 1 to 3, because as it goes into 5, right? 5 was a bit slow for me, I think. I'm on season 6 now, um, season 6 episode 13, so by the time it's like 18 and then it hits the movies. I've watched Sex and the City, the movie, like two times, and I just wanted to know the trajectory. First of all, I love it because it's New York, and I will always have a very special bond to New York, but the thing it also is that it's a very women-centric piece. So it talks about like breast cancer, it talks about like um, your partners and dating and everything. And as a very young twenty-something woman, to kind of see how like thirty-something women are living, it's very interesting. I think it kind of screwed me up a little bit in like the romance department. So like. These few days I have been like, oh I wanna be with somebody but I don't think I actually want that. I don't like how they are so white and they're so privileged. I still don't really like how they always exoticize someone that is a person of colour. Oh wait, wait and Carrie using the phrase, I can't help but wonder. It just happens so many episodes, I'm like, find somewhere else to frame it, dude. But yeah, um, in general, I kind of like how different the characters are. So like Charlotte and, and Miranda and Carrie and Samantha, I'm definitely like a Miranda kind of person, I guess. Like, I, I see a lot of myself in her, which is fun because most people like to think themselves as Carrie, right? It's not on Netflix, which is a bummer. I really hope they come to Netflix soon, but... It's the internet, you'll be able to find it. Okay, now let's talk about YouTube. I actually want to do like a top 10 favourite channels or series on YouTube that I watch a lot because I'm like a huge YouTube consumer. Let me know if you guys are into that, but right now I'm just going to share with you too. Um, I really love... Oh, it's literally 
from the channel Wow Presents, which does a lot of like the RuPaul Drag Race, like post interviews, like different shows. They also have like reviews, so like fashion toots and boots. And I just love uh, a lot because they are so funny. Trixie Mattel and my favorite Katya, but they're so crazy. So I've been like watching them a lot. I think I watched them a lot more like last month and last last month, and I've stopped kind of now ish, but I just really like it. And much more recently, my ex absolute favorite thing. I don't know how many of you guys know this about me but I love watching cooking videos on YouTube. I love cooking. I've been watching like sorted food and everything for a while but I kind of got bored of them and my new favorite is Bon Appetit. An Epicurious but definitely Bon Appetit more. Bon Appetit is based in New York and they just have like a ton of really really cool recipes. Surprisingly easy ones and all of the people in Bon Appetit are so full of personality. They're so funny. Like Carla is like the big like Italian mom. Like she's really chill. Molly is very cute. She abbreviates her words. She looks like a little angel. And Brett, like everyone was talking about how funny Brett was but like I was not watching his videos and I was like why is everyone like talking about Brett, like they're so in love with him, I don't understand. He's like this big burly guy from New Jersey and I'm just like, what? But then I watched um, his series It's Alive, fermentation, like stuff that's alive, like food that's alive. How to make sausages, like crabbing in Alaska, or like oyster farming, making honey, um, doing like fermented stuff, so like pickles, kimchi, um, drink, kombucha. So it's really like, it's very chapalang, but the thing is the editing is so hilarious and it actually reminds me of how uh, it's being shot. But I, I have to do that because if you see the, the playlist and yeah, you get it. Very kitschy, very like meme kind of like editing, which like it's very fun to watch, you know? So I really, really like Bon Appetit. I also like the experts, you know, with the price points and them justifying the price difference and seeing which one is more expensive and which one is higher quality. I love everything about it. My favorite video from them, I still watch them like I, I'm the kind of person that re-watches videos if I like them, right? I know some people don't like you, but I do. It's the Miss Cracker making ravioli with Carla. <sighs> so good, so funny, and I just, I love Miss Cracker. She's my favorite from season 10, RuPaul's Drag Race. So yeah, okay, I'm gonna stop rambling because I can go on. But I am gonna talk about one last thing that I've been really into, um, more so this month than like, earlier in the year, but I've just always been into it, which is like tarot card reading, divination in general. And there's this new one that I found out about, numerology. Our generation is the generation that really likes like horoscope and like all of that. So I started getting more into it because in March it was like Mercury was in retrograde and I felt the change. Like I really felt something different. I felt like everything was kind of like going out of whack. I was injuring myself a lot and like I was just having really weirdly vivid dreams and so I asked my friends around me and they were all like saying the same thing and it's because Mercury is in retrograde and I found that out because I was on Twitter and everyone was talking about how Mercury was in retrograde so I was like dang son gotta get on that shit so um, I started figuring out what moon signs were so your sun sign is like your horoscope so I'm a Capricorn because my birthday is on the 3rd of January right and then your moon sign is like calculated by the time of your birth the position of the moon and my moon sign is Gemini I started like looking more and more into it and I've just been very intrigued. So I don't live my life by the rules of what my horoscope defines me as but I just like to know law, like I just like to keep all. And something else that you guys don't really know about me is that I've had a deck of tarot cards, just one, since I was 16 because the person that was doing the reading on me distinctly said that like I had a very strong affinity to cards and that's actually not the first time someone has said that. Some other psychic said it to me before so I was like you know what I'm gonna try my hand at this. And so far all all of my readings have been very uh, interesting, very accurate, very like brutally honest. Um, I've had friends who weren't happy after the reading because they were saying that like I revealed things about themselves that they weren't yet ready to admit. So it's it's kind of crazy and I've been really into it. I just have a problem because I don't have enough people to read but now I'm starting to like bring it up to people and like I have done a couple of readings so I'm like really into it. It's really 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 fun. I don't know how you all feel about it. Um, some people think it's like witchcraft like paganism but I don't see it that way. I think it's just like fun. It's like 
it's like intuitive, I think. And it's just something that I just like to have fun with. And numerology is also really fun. I'm gonna do a separate video on it. I'm gonna definitely do it because it's really, really fun. So we can like sit down together and we can like figure out our numbers and everything will be fun. <laughs> So that's it for my favourites for now, for you know, this half of the year. I hope you guys enjoyed it and I hope you guys understand why this video had to be so long just because I had a ton of stuff to talk about. But thank you if you have, you know, stayed with me this long, if you're still here watching this very bit, thank you. I really appreciate it. Don't forget to click the thumbs up if you like this video and also subscribe to my channel down below. I make new videos every week, sometimes twice a week and I will be away overseas, kinda really excited about it. I'll definitely be vlogging, so stay tuned for that and I will see you guys very, very soon. Bye! I always do this. I don't know what this is, like windshield? Wind? Bye! Like from a cleansing joil. Uh, joil? Joil? Girl. This is just, well, hair. <laughs> Shit, it's already 11 minutes long and I'm still on my first category. Okay! Oh my god, god, god. So Atlanta, Georgia is the birthplace of New York. Ah, birthplace. Ah, what?